Hey there, hi there, everybody. Hello, hello. How's it going, Rackbar? Firebird Lover, Danieldo, Oddity, Olivia 5K, Martin Score is easy. Thanks for the 32 months of support. And Chunt with the 30 months, the three metric years during the pre roll there. Thank you, thank you. So I want to address in more detail a question that was asked by Jam Jam. Jam Jam asks, what makes a game streamable? And are there games you love but don't stream? Uh, and the answer is it takes a lot of things to make a game streamable. And I have a, a few basic criteria that I do use to judge my interest in streaming a game or whether... I should stream a game. Um, where do I start here? On a personal level, I need to enjoy the game, so I have to find the core gameplay loop interesting, and usually this also requires that I think the game has a, a decent ambiance. It has to have a, a visual look that I'm okay with spending a bunch of time in, and um, an audio experience that I enjoy. And lots of games don't don't meet the criteria there, and that's that's more a, a personal preference, unless what makes a game streamable in general. Um, another big factor is viewer interest. Some games have much larger ability to draw in eyes uh, than others, and and that can really factor into whether I'm interested in streaming a game. There's plenty of games I've streamed, but um, consistently, comparatively low viewer interest kind of discourages repeated streamings and so I do occasionally let games go for that reason uh, in general for a, a game to, to be really engaging and interesting to um, to a, a live stream audience I think it does need to have a couple specific things though uh, one is that it needs to be relatively short form so the more you get towards games like huge epic story games like Persona or Baldur's Gate um, or things like that, the longer one playthrough gets, the harder it is for anyone to come in to a, a live stream where they're probably only going to spend 15 to 45 minutes or so hanging out. You'll get a, a small subset snippet of the game experience. And the more you can comprehend and engage with the game just in a subset of itself, the the better that is for, for live streaming. Uh, ideally, to make a game really streamable, it's it should be as drop-in, drop-out as possible. You can pop in at any game state, understand what's happening, and kind of enjoy the action. And there's lots of games where that's true. Uh, chess, I think, is a good example of a really old game where that exact thing applies. You can jump into a, a chess game in progress kind of take a look at the board state and get a whole kind of idea of what's going on and enjoy the gameplay without having to understand the, the background of how you got to that game state. And I think that's pretty true in Slay the Spire too. That's part of what makes Spire really good. Uh, another aspect that's very important is user interface visibility. Game UIs have all sorts of broad design choices, but when it comes to making a game streamable, the UI plays a huge role because viewers are constantly coming in who are att attempting to take stock of the current situation. You know, they want to see what's going on in the game. And so the game has to present information in a way that not just the person playing the game, but also people who are viewing the game can easily read and interpret. Um, for a live stream, many people are tuning in on their phones with pretty small screens. And so games that have small or blurry fonts, tiny or hard to distinguish icons, extremely large numbers, um, overlaid transparency effects or various other things can become a real visual mess um, when trying to interpret through a phone screen for a viewer. Slay the Spire does a really good job in this regard because of its 
clear, distinct, consistent art style. Um, bright fonts, overall pretty large font choices in general. Um, it, it, and it means that you can pretty easily understand and see and distinguish all the cards and what they do uh, without needing to have every pixel available. Yeah, looking at you, Vampire Survivors, bitrate, you know, uh, games with over overstimulating visual effects, which translate into uh, bitrate garbage, can also be not so streamable. Never even thought of watching Twitch on the phone? Pretty, pretty popular choice. Um, PC viewers are, I think, a plurality now, but not a majority. So the, the vast majority of... Yeah, Bloons TD6, also pretty guilty of this. The vast majority of... Or not vast, the... Simple majority of, of viewers are watching through some kind of... I guess you could call it secondary device. A phone, uh, a smart TV, a console. Dark Cloud with the 18 months of support. iPad, yeah, ta iPads or tablets... So even, even just like a tablet device, um, it's going to have less room to display information than, than a full-size PC monitor. And so things like font size and small icons can really get you if you're trying to view. Twitch also, yeah, as Shlu notes, Twitch has a global audience and many have uh, lousy PCs or no PCs. I mean, that's kind of the appeal, right? You... One of the cool things about Twitch is that anyone with an internet connection can watch people playing the latest and greatest games, even if they themselves can't even afford the license for the game, let alone the device you would play the game on. And not everyone has a solid or stable internet connection either. And so because of that, you might be forced to watch a stream at 720p or even 480p or lower. Um, and if the game can't be parsed at those resolutions, then it's less streamable, plain and simple. Chun says, watching on the phone is why I ended up getting Twitch Turbo, because you can't get ad block on the phone. Hard to get ad... Twitch is waged a relatively successful war against ad blockers. So it's a constant game of like, will the ad blocker work or won't it? So I, I definitely appreciate Twitch Turbo for just no ads on any Twitch channel ever. It's like 13 a month, I think, for Turbo. Maybe a bit more now. Entirely worth it if you're a channel jumper like myself. Echopedia, thanks for the uh, tier one sub. Jester's chest hair with the 34 months. 34 is the score. And yes, there are there are ways to block ads on phone, but it's a, a high barrier, to, a higher barrier to entry, which of course means that a smaller percentage of the population with phones will be using ad blockers. It's been a pretty successful war the phone makers have waged in that way. Died to Slime Boss four times in a row. Oof. Cylon. Maybe we'll be able to get past uh, Slime Boss today in our silent gameplay. I believe the current streak stands at two. Yes, two silent runs. We had double after image into double a thousand cuts runs. Did some hot nonsense last time I played. And just to address your comment real quick, the Plasma Wolf, uh, on YouTube, the video creator can control quite a lot about how ads are run during videos. And I'm pretty sure you can manually select on YouTube to have your videos be 
not monetized or ad-free. Although I'm not 100% sure if YouTube will impose their ads sometimes. For example, on Twitch, you can't stop pre-roll ads. I, I choose not to run any manual ads on this channel, but if you watch without a subbed account, you'll still see ads uh, when first loading into the channel, and you may even see mid-roll ads occasionally if Twitch decides to serve them to you. I can't stop that, unfortunately. Nuruzi says, I've been trying the ladder challenge on Clad and lost at Ascension 13 today. That's pretty good, actually. If you're getting past Ascension 10 on a ladder challenge, you're doing quite well. The ladder challenge is no joke, beating all of the Ascensions consecutively. There's a reason it took me about a year of trying to do it the first time. We did not get a 20 streak on Ironclad, not yet. We'll be back to the clad sometime in the future, but I wanted to switch things up for everyone's sake, including my own, and play some silent. Likewise, after several months of trying, if we haven't gotten a 20 streak on silent, um, the, but I have gotten some win streaks that I'm satisfied with, uh, then I'll be happy moving on to defect. Does Ladder Streak need a heart kill? Uh, that's up to whoever's playing it. I required a heart kill for my Ladder Streak, yeah. The Ladder Streak, as I envisioned it, is played with heart, heart runs. And uh, was originally rotating characters, but uh, you can modify the Ladder Challenge in any way you seek. We did Ladder Challenges with custom variations. Um, after defeating the original ladder, such as the no-skip ladder, still probably one of my favorite ladders of all time. Consecutively, consecutively beat all the ascensions without ever skipping a card reward. It was pretty cool. So, Silent, Ascension 20, The Heart, is the name of the game here. And so far, our lessons in Silent have been... Respect Act 1, especially the Act 1 hard pool. Holy moly, the Act 1 hard pool can a trash silence. First three fights are easy peasy, but as soon as you get to that fourth fight, if it's a nasty one and you don't have a high value card, you could really be put into the dumpster very quickly. It's a pretty spooky looking act overall. We've got elites with no rest site beforehand, which is definitely tough for silent. There's only one path that kind of escapes that. And then if we take that path, we're only getting one elite in Act 1, which is subpar. The good news is we have the Guardian as our Act boss, so at the very minimum, we probably get out of the Act if we get to the boss. How's it going, Frozen FF8? We're going to be playing Slice and Dice after Spire today. I do have to make today a slightly shorter stream than usual, probably only five or six hours. So there might not be a whole lot of slice and dice, but yeah, we'll be doing slice and dice later today. Somewhat eccentric says, today I spotted an albino Dalmatian. It was the least I could do. <laughs> I like that. Paolini, thanks for the prime sub and the four months. But I mind ranking my card choices this run. I think that's not a bad idea. I can do that. Especially as we're kind of still transitioning into the silent mindset. I think it's a good idea to take our time and really evaluate a lot with some of these runs. How did the singing bowl work with the no skip ladder? I forget... if I totally disallowed it or if I limited it to once per act. I feel like I totally disallowed it. Nurk it with 32 months. Full auto with eight months. Sub baby on the way.
to health is not a skip. In a, in a very technical sense, I, I, I guess that is true. Terra and Kuriui op remember once per act. Okay, so I, I think I might have limited myself to once per act. Because I wanted it to still do something, but not nothing. And once per act is pretty good under no skipping rules. So, starting options here. These are not great. Three random potions and obtain a curse transform two in this position. I would both rank lower than six max health. These are both really stinky options. Three random potions. I guess it could help if we wanted to take on one of these elites, maybe. But even then, I don't love it. Especially with that shop there where I can just buy a potion. Boss Swap losing Ring of the Snake for a new Relic actually could be the play here. Especially with the relatively low Elite Path we're offered. We could make up for that with an additional Boss Relic. I'm not a big fan of the losing the Ring of the Snake, but I could definitely see this. I also rank Colorless card pretty highly for Silent. I think a lot of the uncommon Colorless pool um, is really good. 20 rotating is still the record streak? Yes, the, the record has stood for more than a year now, um, despite some very good players trying to beat it. And a few coming quite close, actually. We've seen like 16 or 18 from a couple different people. But no one has managed to tie or beat 20. Color list for silence specifically? Yes. For silence specifically. Well, also for ironclad specifically, actually. For ironclad because so many of them say exhaust on them. Uh, for Silent, it's more because many of them are zero cost or scale with dexterity. We're talking finesse and good instincts. Um, or help out her damage. Dramatic entrance, trip are pretty good in that regard. I rather like the uncommon colorless pool. So finesse, for example, scales with uh, dexterity. That can be okay if you get footwork. Dark Shackles is, of course, excellent. Zero cost block nine is pretty much the worst case scenario for this card, and it can do much better things than that. But we both thought 20 would be broken by now. <laughs> that makes sense, Nox Rags. I, I am surprised the record has st uh, stood for this long. Willy with the prime sub in the half year. Always Madge Zeminio with four months. Thank you all. Mr. Zorag, thanks for the prime sub and the 12 months. And Azum Sauce, thanks for the prime sub in three months. Trans rights taught us that discovery helps silent damage, but boy, does it hurt to whiff on. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's a good card overall. I'm not 100% how sure about how I feel on with... Blah. I'm not 100% sure how I feel about this card for Silent, specifically. I like it on the other characters a lot, but Silent feels like it's maybe a little bit weaker due to lower cost cards on average, maybe. Lastly, I owe the chat a dad joke. Right before all these subs here. Uh, for Black Hattie. What do you call... A party where you can both listen to 70s music and generate random cards. A disco very. Let's try Discovery again. I think Dark Shackles would be really good. Maybe I should take Dark Shackles. Although Dark Shackles won't kill an elite for me. Discovery might. Let's take Discovery. I, I, I want to get a, a better feel for how good Discovery is on Silent here. And then I think I want three combats and an event for the shop. If we get something pretty good, maybe some decent potions, we could perhaps consider fighting an extra elite here. Um, but otherwise, we'll proceed along the green path and see what happens. There could be anything... No, there couldn't be a Dark Shackles in that discovery. No, there could be a Piercing Whale in the discovery. But there can't be a Dark Shackles. 
Okay, I'm... I'm remembering an important lesson that I learned. If you draw lots of strikes on turn one against Jawworm is silent, it's a really good idea to play at least two of them. Playing Defend Defend Strike here puts us too far behind on damage for this fight. And indeed we know that Jawworm is a menace. So I'm going to go double strike, one defend. You could even maybe advocate for triple strike here, although that feels really bold. We've got Discovery. I think we'll be okay. Surely Discovery won't whiff. Entirely. Smiley face. Surely not. Uh, help. Sucker Punch is pretty good. Sucker Punch is pretty good. Saves health this turn, and it's a decent attack for later. Dodge and Roll saves a little bit more health this turn, but puts us further behind in the damage game, so let's not do that. Oh no. It's already going to 10 strength. Hopefully we can finish it soon. Probably can't do 19 damage, though. But we can full block this turn. We got him. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. And we're offered Blade Dance, Backflip, Bouncing Flask. Very interesting here. Let's try to rank these choices. Backflip is block and draw. I really like Backflip as a card for Silent in general. I really think it's a, a good draw glue that sticks your deck together. But at the beginning of the game, drawing more cards just gets more strikes and defends in your hand, which doesn't actually help you. Instead, you need to find better cards to add, and we're looking for premium damage here. Blade Dance, 12 damage for 1 energy, or Bouncing Flask, 9 poison for 2 energy. Bouncing Flask is a really good way to deal with uh, bosses. Um, says, what do you call a rain shelter for frisbees? A disc covery. Excellent. If I was fighting Slime Boss, this would be an easy Blade Dance pick. The Guardian here. We could reasonably go for Bouncing Flask, and I really do like this card for single target damage. So I think... If we're going to rank the cards here, maybe Bouncing Flask first with Blade Dance a narrow second. They're pretty close, and you could e easily reverse these with Backflip in third place and then Skip in fourth place. I would, I would never skip here. Let's take that Bouncing Flask. See how it works. There it is on turn one alongside the Disco. Uh, I guess I'll take a Blur. Bouncing Flask, 9 damage the first turn, 8 damage the second turn, so 17 over 2 turns, 24 over 3 turns. It's quite a lot of damage. And if you play any other Poison cards, or if you play Bouncing Flask again, well, it just gets better. Call indeed. All right, our first potion is Strength Potion. And Quick Slash, Dagger Spray, Dodge and Roll. Ooh. I guess I'll take Dagger Spray, probably. Quick Slash is single target damage that draws one. I find Quick Slash a pretty weak card overall. The damage it deals just isn't enough, generally speaking. And the draw one is... Fine. Also not enough, really. Hello and welcome, the only schizo. Isn't Quick Slash the same as, same as Pommel Strike? No, for ver two very important reasons. One, Ironclad gets strength, which means Ironclad can make a Pommel Strike do 30 damage easy. Whereas Silent does not have very many ways to scale a Quick Slash. Number two is that Pommel Strike upgrades to draw two cards. Quick Slash does not. 
Although it does get a lot more damage. Plus four is pretty good. But even a quick slash plus is just mediocre. But yeah, the, the inability to upgrade it for additional draw and the lack of strength gain on silent means that this card just pales in comparison to Pommel Strike. Dagger Spray is some nice AoE. We talked about respecting the hard pool here, and I think Dagger Spray is the respect the hard pool pick here. Whereas Dodge and Roll is some block without dexterity or an upgrade. I find it hard to want a Dodge and Roll. I think here I would be Dagger Spray 1, Quick Slash 2, Skip is very slightly behind Quick Slash at number 3, and then Dodge and Roll is number 4 here. I would not pick Dodge and Roll at all. I would rather skip than take a Dodge and Roll in this position. Currently we still need damage to be able to make uh, the hard pool encounters or any upcoming elites a bit less threatening. this. We could just Dagger Spray Survivor, or I could Bouncing Flask Survivor. If the front one gets hit twice, I could Bouncing Flask into Dagger Spray. I think it's just Dagger Spray. Front one goes to four, meaning a strike kills it. I think it's just Dagger Spray. Don't try to play Bouncing Flask here. Yeah, we're good. What's at the disco? Backstabs at the disco. Cool stuff. All right, once again, uh, Blade Dance and Quick Slash are here. I definitely do not mind Blade Dance with a Strength Potion, actually. Acrobatics can be really good for the mid to late game, but I think it really is hard to justify on three energy and acrobatics. I'd much rather have a backflip. So I would probably rank Blade Dance number one, Quick Slash at Distant number two, followed by Skip and Acrobatics at number four here. Pick a Blade Dance. And what's our event? I'm hoping this makes me money. Remove Transform Upgrade. Okay, we can actually think about Elite Fight in here. Especially with a Strength Potion. If I were to upgrade Blade Dance... We might have enough damage to kill the elite, especially if I buy a potion and slash or a card in the shop here. Blade Dance upgrade would be four base damage, six with the strength potion. Whereas Bouncing Flask would be three more poison. Bouncing Flask upgrade's pretty good as well. Makes Lagavulin pretty easy. Really good if we draw a turn one against Gremlin Knob, but not that good otherwise. Dagger Spray upgrade is decent as well. We add more damage to all targets, plus four. Uh, although it doesn't benefit extra from the Strength Potion like the Blade Dance does. That's why I would upgrade the Blade Dance. For, uh, for Grumlin Knob and Lagavulin. If we're talking about using the Strength Potion, this upgrade is four damage. This upgrade is six damage. Take the six damage upgrade. This, uh, this upgrade is three per turn, which is potentially better. Did I end up mastering every card? I did. Yeah, we, we completed the mastery challenge, and it was great. I'll upgrade that Bouncing Flask. I'm going to want that upgraded anyway. Right, what's in the shop? On sale bullet time. Poison Stab. Hmm. If I want to go Red Path here, I think we would do Poison Stab, Blessing of the Forge. But I don't have to do that. We could do other things. Is Bouncing Flask scaling damage? I would say so, Nox Frags. Yes, po I, would, I would call Poison an inherent scaling damage effect on silent kind of uh, although it's a little counterintuitive kind of in the same way that exhaust is an inherent scaling mechanic for the ironclad that is also counterintuitive the more 
poison you can stack on an enemy, the more damage per turn you can do. So you're adding damage per turn per turn. And that is scaling. That's what scaling is. Damage per turn per turn. Would remove ever be an option? I don't love that option. Uh, I like that option a lot more if I'm not going red path. But removing a card into the elites doesn't seem that helpful. You could... M There's a slight argument to be made for making Bouncing Flask more likely to be drawn on turn one, but... Any remove we make punishes us against sentries. Um, and prevents us from purchasing something that helps more immediately. And we, we'd rather spend the money on the immediate help. The Poison Stab and the Blessing of the Forge. I'm going to try taking the ambitious path here. We're going to go Peace Stab, Blessing of the Forge, take Red Path. I just think this this one elite act is just not enough to be a good start here. So I'm going to leverage the strength we've obtained and see if we can make something happen here. All right, we do face the three sentries. This would be a good time to consider a potion. With two more fights coming up, I'm pretty happy using the strength potion in this fight. Maybe not the blessing here. Especially with this strength potion, this dagger spray slaps pretty dang hard. Scotino, thanks for the prime sub in the 13 months. How much stronger on average does an elite kill or relic drop make you? Oh, that's pretty hard to, to quantify. You can try doing things like... Converting all of the various bonuses you get into gold or some other quantifiable metric, but I don't think that actually provides a, a, a truly clear picture. In general, relics are better than upgrades. In general. Yeah, yeah, that's what... Other players have done things like assign gold value to, to everything, but the value of gold isn't constant, so I, I don't completely agree with that. Yeah, the, the value of gold is not constant in this game. Or Presentagon Jr., thanks for the eight months of support. You could use health valuation, but same problem. Health valuation is also not constant. Let's see. I need currently four strikes to kill this one. Could obviously use the peace stab if we're gonna use a strike here. And I think I am gonna use a strike. This does what, 18? Yeah, so we're way more likely to kill this thing next turn if I strike it now. So I'd rather take five to maybe save ten. I'm gonna have to do that damage eventually, also. So getting ahead on damage, and yes, because I played that, we do get to save ten here. So immediate payoff there. Good work. Looks like we have a pretty good block next turn. I'm thinking we probably play Discovery Survivor Blade Dance, skip Bouncing Flask. Um, so that means this one's not really a threat next turn. I'd like to kill this one in two turns, if possible. Yeah, so that's the exact hand we get. What do you got, Discovery? Oh, so close to making Grand Finale work. I'll take Die, Die, Die for 15 to both of them, though. Sounds good. And I could kill you right now, but I think I'll just take the two and guarantee that I don't take five next turn. Leaving this fight with 33 health and one potion would be pretty good. Yeah, we get there. Okay, that was a good strength potion use. We get a toxic egg, which I'm actually only kind of happy with. Toxic egg... First Relic on Silent is, of course, amazing because skills. However, 
It is not any immediate value, which is dangerous. We want to have relics that provide immediate numeric output, and Toxic Egg is not that. We have to survive the next few floors in order for the Toxic Egg to do anything. Uh, and therefore, the Toxic Egg won't save us if we get Gremlin knobbed. Although I am looking at this Deflect Plus with uh, hungry eyes. That said, what if I need to take this Skewer? Kind of is immediate value if we pick Deflect or Acro. I mean, only kind of, right? Because if you pick a Deflect Plus and then you play and then you fight a Gremlin Knob, is that value? Or is that just you dying with a Deflect Plus? Whereas if we have a skewer that we can upgrade with Forge Pot and boost with Energy Pot to be a guaranteed 50 damage, that sounds like security to me. What I would like to do is get through this next Elite and then ignore this one. Don't even go that way. We, we're going to go this way now. Because having a Toxic Egg means... Um, we just need to stay alive short term and we'll, we'll accumulate value in the long term. Are we really that afraid of Knob right now? Yes. Yes. Gremlin Knob has 90 health, right? We've got, uh, 30, 33, 41, 53. 59 plus 3 poison. 59 plus 12 poison, maybe? Does not equal 90 health. So we absolutely fail to kill Gremlin Knob in 3 turns with the current deck. 100% of the time, pretty much. Maybe if there's turn 1 Bouncing Flask and Poison Stab. Or Discovery makes something really cool. Otherwise, we're, we're absolutely going to die to Gremlin Knob if we don't pick the skewer, probably. Final Violin, thanks for 49 months of support. Yeah, I, I think this has to be skewer it would be first pick, deflect second pick, acro third pick. Don't skip when those cards is A+. Plus. But yeah, I'm taking skewer here, because uh, Gremlin Ob is, in fact, that scary. Yes, he is. Yeah, with the, with the energy potion... The skewer is, is... If we didn't have the energy potion, I don't think I would be taking that skewer as aggressively. And if we just killed a Gremlin Ob, I would have picked Deflect. If we'd already beaten Gremlin Ob. But with Gremlin Ob being 50% chance next floor, we have to make concessions to the threat that is Nob. A ghost and you're dead. Take that. Double energy potion. Interesting. And I want a little bit more damage, but I don't really want it to be in my deck, so I'll take an Endless Agony here. This would be Agony 1, maybe Dagger Throw 2, skip 3, don't take Real with Holes. Let me just do quick thinking here. Let's see, Energy Potion. So currently we can do... 10 by 5, 50. Or if I double energy potion, it's 7 by 7, which is 49. I guess the Forge Pot is better than the energy potion. Okay. Not Gremlin Knob. That Deflect might have been nice. Uh, however, we get Bouncing Flask, Poison Stab, turn 1 against Lagavulin. That's pretty good. Would be an okay time to forge potion. We get one more poison on the P stab and weaken next turn saves five. And then a bunch of cards upgraded. I don't love what's in the draw pile, unfortunately. We're definitely gonna get walloped a little bit. Or it's kind of scary. Just need to get through this fight. 
How likely is Forge Pot to save more than five if I wait? Probably not very likely. Let's do this now. Enjoy your 16 poison, nerd. Yeah, I thought this turn might be pretty bad in terms of defense. What do you got, Discovery? Hmm. Six more poisons, probably the best bet here. This fight will last at least three more turns, so this is minimum 18 damage, whereas unloads 14. Oh, the wait, Finisher, hold on. No, I can't do that much damage with Finisher. If I Blade Dance, the Finisher will do 18, though. But that's only exactly 18. So, yes, Corpse Explosion here. Corpse Explosion, Defend, Blade Dance, take 10. Ah, I was afraid of that. Didn't draw the Survivor, take another 10. Good news is we're not dead, and we're perfectly okay with resting, thanks to Toxic Egg. Won't fall behind on upgrades by taking defensive plays. Vajra, there we go. Plus one strength is nice. How about a Blade Dance plus to go with that plus one strength? Did I ever prefer an older patch of Spire as the game was going through changes, or were all the changes for the better? I would say most of the changes were for the better, yeah. When Ascension 20 first came out, I didn't didn't love it that much, but um, at no point did I prefer an older patch, because you can always just not play on A20. But I, I have felt like almost every patch has been an improvement. Burst is also pretty spicy, especially with the Toxic Egg, right? You can burst Bouncing Flask, Burst Discovery, Burst Blade Dance. But I do not feel like it is that good at the moment. And right now, with well, I guess we don't we're not gonna have nine health. We're we're guaranteed a rest before anything happens. But yeah, I don't I don't love the burst yet. But it definitely is more value long term. Let's do it. I don't think since I'm resting and I have decent cards already, I do not feel like we need to take this blade dance. So let's do the burst. Let's take the upgraded rare card. I mean, that's awesome. Would I take Masterful Stab over Skipping? I don't think so here. It'd be one, two, three, four. Ah, perfect timing. Get in here, Regal Pillow. I was just about to have a nap. Beautiful. We've had first survivor, yes, but what about second survivor? Also, first was not too bad there. Got him. Ooh, yeah, that's what I like to see. Upgraded skills. Escape Plan Plus is pretty tempting. It's just a uh, zero cost, maybe gain five block. That sounds pretty good. And in a deck that has a Toxic Egg, surely there's going to be lots of skills. Acro is also just really good card draw. Acro is definitely viable. I think either of the two skill picks is uh, is correct to pick here. Massively skilled. Quirt Vert with a full year. Let's go. I like the escape plan. I like just getting free value out of my cards sometime. Take an escape plan. Maybe it was correct to take an acro for later there. I could certainly believe that. But I chose what I chose. Get this dagger spray upgraded before I regret my choice. And do we hit the shop with only 122 gold? Probably, right? Because of card rewards. Although, maybe I just take fights. I could remove a strike of the shop. I can't afford an upgraded colorless rare skill, but I could afford Panic Button Plus or Dark Shackles Plus or something. I think I should just take the 
Art Rewards and go to a shop in Act 2. We've got lots of health, so let's spend some of that. And currently, you're going to 43. You split at 33. So I can do nine more damage. One strike. Double bouncing flask. Death by poison. Blah. Here we go. Not the world's worst backstab. I am a lot more okay with a dodge roll that has an upgrade, though. I like this somewhat. Not 100% in love with expertise, but upgraded card draw cards are usually pretty good. We're fighting a Guardian, which makes this dodge and roll quite nice. And then I like dodge and roll plus in Act 2. Pretty good block, even while frail against many Act 2 encounters. Let's take dodge and roll here. Yeah, it's better with burst. Expertise doesn't work with burst. Is a, a good point as well. Expertise does not work with burst. Is there any situation where it could? Hmm. I'm trying to think if any vanilla Spire card discards when you draw it. There's modded cards that could make burst expertise work. I can't think of any vanilla situations where it would. It's 24, not enough to kill you. Uh, I'll just take the flying knee. That's also exactly enough damage. Shivtacular. Still no potion, huh? Okay, now, now I'll take the acrobatics. We should have one. Does the toxic egg affect shop prices? It does not, Sword Hunter. Healthy snacks. Thank you so much for the three months. Recently got your first A20 heart wins on Ironclad, Silent, and Defect. Well done. Welcome to the A20 Heart Club. Take an acro. How many hours in Slay the Spire do I have? We are now at over 7,000 hours of this video game. I like to call this the most replayable video game I've ever played. And it definitely continues to do that. Nerd? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Huge nerd, as charged. Should we worry about supersizing the deck in Act 1? Or does the egg make this fine? The egg makes this mostly fine, especially on Silent. It is completely fine to have a 50-card deck if all of those cards are upgraded. Uh, and especially on Silent, where you have cards like Acrobatics and Calculated Gamble, um, it's very easy for us to create a gigantic deck that we can just draw every card in. Do I think I'll put that many hours into Spire 2? I hope so. Hope so. And Star-Lord, thanks for the tier 1 sub. Thanks, nerd. Do I ever play Spire off stream? Sometimes. On my vacation week, I played the Seed of the Week off stream. Oh, I meant to do the Seed of the Week as the opening of the stream today. Maybe we'll do that later in the stream. Definitely got to do the Seed of the Week. Debating what to upgrade here, it could be Neutralize for one turn more Weaken. It could be Skewer for more damage per energy we sink into it. Although we can't currently make Skewer do huge damage outside of the Energy Potion, so I don't love the Skewer upgrade.
could also upgrade our poison stab for one more poison. I think I'd rather do neutralize or skewer. Let's do neutralize. Want a bit more defense in this deck. For the guardian fight. Oh, guardian is ruined. Ruined, I say. Enjoy your 24 poison, nerd. Perfectly avoid uh, transforming Guardian on turn one as well. It means we get sort of a free turn here, where we don't actually have to do anything. We just get free damage. There's that dodge roll. Actually, no, we transform, right? Back into your ball. Thanks, poison. Ah, easy game. Talk about a clean fight. GG. Get some money, a potion, and anyone for a doppelganger plus. Next turn, draw X plus one cards and draw gain X plus one energy. That makes Skewer pretty good. I like to think of doppelganger as... Delayed adrenaline sometimes. It'd be quite good. Yeah, it means Chemex becomes amazing, too. That said, Die Die Die's ability to do some AoE is very tempting here. What's oh, a really good burst target, though? Burst Doppelganger Plus is absurd. Absolutely absurd. I'm taking that. No Pyramid here. We got Coffee Dripper, Ectoplasm, Sneko Eye. Is this a Sneko Deco? Hmm. Not a bad Sneko Eye. The Endless Agony is pretty terrible. The Escape Plan's not great. The Bouncing Flask is good, though. The Skewer is good. The Doppelganger is good. The Burst is pretty good, because we get more cards in hand. I do not dislike this Sneko Eye. Is it as good as Coffee Dripper? The Rego Pillow makes me kind of dislike Coffee Dripper, but for energy with uh, Toxic Egg is going to do wonders for us. And I think we can be pretty conservative with our pathing. Maybe fight less elites with the Dripper here. Not even an unreasonable Ectoplasm. I agree with that. You could take Ectoplasm here. and We'll lose out on Gold Gain meaning we probably lose out on some removes and, frustratingly, the ability to purchase upgraded skills. I think I'd much rather take Coffee Dripper than Ecto here, even with the Rigo Pillow. How's it going, Munchie Dan? The Eclipse was incredible. One of the coolest things I've ever seen. I gotta say that the... the Camera pictures of a total solar eclipse do not do it justice for what it looks like uh, in person. Take the coffee dripper. Oh, it's kind of spooky. Worst elite here. Actually, no, we can go around here. Not forced. But only one elite, huh? <laughs> wow, this very sparse elite pathing in this uh, game. Probably I want to do something like this. Get a shop right before the elite. 
Makes life not too bad. Do I think Ecto should affect stolen back gold from thieves? I felt like Ecto should say something like you get less gold, 50% less or 70% less. Um, or it should say you don't gain gold from combat rewards, but still allow you to gain gold from relics or something. Really dislike that, uh, that Ectoplasm can essentially create dead relics. Hmm, I wonder what happens if I do this. Hmm. I see. Eight times nine. Seventy two. We forge potion we can kill right now. See what Discovery has first. Now this is 64. Bouncing Flask is more damage than Skewer also, even for the energy. I think we're pretty good for getting a kill next turn now, right? Yeah, we only need one hit. Save our potions. We do get a strength potion. Backstab. Dash is actually not bad, even without being upgraded. Or deflect plus. I like this deflect a lot now that we're in Act 2. And we're going to take upgraded card draw cards. Let's take a deflect here. Strength potion, huh? Getting to the point where most stuff is upgraded, let's lose this Forge Potion, the Strength Potion. Excellent. Get nerded, birds. Double defend, or I can single defend Bouncing Flask. I think that's actually probably correct. Take one here. Get some more damage done. Oh, nice. The perfect one to poison. Excuse you. Well, this turn is pretty bad. We can at least kill you, right? Okay, not that bad, actually. No, not bad at all. Never mind. We got him. My favorite silent card. Hmm. In terms of arts, I really like the art on Adrenaline. That's my favorite art on Silence. In terms of mechanics, it might be something like Terror. I don't think I want a Cloak Plus here. We don't have good enough Shiv interactions. Adrenaline X. That's right. I'm going to skip these. Although, maybe we want all that attack here. Uh, our act boss is Bronze Automaton. I think we'd better take one more AoE card here. Remove a card or upgrade our strikes and defends. I like that. Could have really the whole deck be upgraded. Upgrading our strikes and defends definitely makes the short term a bit more viable. Um, or we could get ahead on removals here. Get rid of one strike now, maybe another one at the shop. Crash Space, thanks for continuing that gifted sub. 
I mean, it is 10 upgrades, right? We should probably take 10 upgrades. Especially with Coffee Dripper. The truth is always simple. Uh-oh. These two are not friendly customers. And may require additional help in the form of potions to avoid disaster here. Good energy potion right now to deal some damage. Not a bad idea. We've been choosed. They choosed us. Okay, you're dead now, okay. Who play? Predator isn't enough damage, right? We can do seven, seven, eight. No, it's not enough. So we take 18. That's a little unfortunate. But what can you do? We might have been able to get both enemies here if I had put a bit less damage into the cultist. Although realistically, we needed Bouncing Flask to hit Chosen more. Feels like... Draw two, discard two. Sounds useful, actually. We could start thinking about picking up tacticians and or reflexes. If we get a few more draw discard cards. Would Empty Cage be OP if it was removed three? I don't think I would say OP. But it would... Uh, it would be a lot better, that's for sure. It's already really good under the right circumstances. Although it took me a long time to recognize Empty Cage is a good boss relic. To Bald, thanks for the Prime sub and the 24 months of support. Okay, we do have Outmaneuver here. Oof. Can't buy Shuriken or Kunai. Bummer. What I can buy is the Liquid Memories. I'll probably do that. Do I want Concentrator Outmaneuver? I don't think that I do at this time. Not right before an elite fight. Can't afford to draw these turn one against slavers. Might buy the Clockwork Souvenir. Although that would mean not buying the Potion, right? I also want to remove. Souvenir is definitely useful-ish. I could get only one, would I get Kunai or Shuriken? In this position, I would get Kunai, for sure. Of the two. Ah. Definitely Kunai. <laughs> I don't need no potion. I'm fine. <laughs> totally, totally fine. Smiley face. It's not even an AoE fight. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Um, I will be contented with Book of Stabbing here. Nice. Stop looking around turn one. Let's card this. It's not getting played. For you. So I'll take another Blade Dance. Don't think we need the Strength Potion here, although maybe I should have thought about it a bit harder before I started playing cards. Maybe I should use it. Alright, we'll use it late. I'll allow it. 
Definitely a damage raise, the Book of Stabbing is. So the quicker we can put an end to this, the better. Strikes are better than the Skewer. Oh well, take one. One is fine. Should be dead next turn. Yeah, he's dead next turn. Okay, that was good. Bottled Lightning. Allows us to start with any skill in the opening hand. Burst is actually pretty good. Doppelganger? Bottled Doppelganger is kind of hype too. Oh, well, what about Bottled Terror Plus or Bottled Leg Sweep Plus or Bottled Blur Plus? Terror Rash, thanks for 14 months of support. In what scenario would I pick Shuriken over Kunai? I think if I had a lot of attack or shiv cards, and I already had a good defensive plan, like if I had uh, Wraith Form and a bunch of shiv cards, I would want Kunai. Or I would want uh, Shuriken, excuse me. I would want the strength in that case. Bottled Terror, though. I mean, that's just... I think that's just too good. Bottle that terror. Greetings, bird nerds. <laughs> yeah. Let's just terrorize all of them. I don't think I've ever had good reason to Nightmare Terror before. <laughs> you know what? You be extra terrified. 297 turns of bone for you. Still alive, though. We're taking 12 here, huh? Uh, let's use this. Burst violence. Amazing. Now there's no attacks in the draw pile. We've got Bouncing Flask, though. Leg Sweep. Yes. Dream Catcher, that's going to be a big ol' no. You're not allowed to dream when you're drinking coffee. Too wide awake. Oh, heck. Double heck. Uh, can I kill the Mystic on turn one? Because this is a great... Yeah, we can. This is a great time to kill Mystic on turn one. When she's hitting you for damage you can't prevent. Just go for the KO. That's what we do. Agony. All out attack. Strike you. That wasn't too bad. Flip with a plus. Toxic Egg from Niao? No, Toxic Egg from Floor 6 Sentries is how we got it. Um, unload's pretty good damage here. Fifteen damage strike. It's even more damage. You can definitely see that we're getting whittled down here with a coffee dripper. Being un unable to heal now is uh, definitely tough. 
Definitely tough. And depending on what's in the event room here, we could have quite a bad time. So tired. Let's finally upgrade Skewer, I guess. Really worried about uh, Bronze Automaton at the moment. Panic Button definitely helps with Bronze Automaton, although realistically, I would need the Will Aid plans also. Ugh. We can't afford the Waffle. Can't afford the Panagraph. my plan to heal. I don't have a plan to heal. I can't heal. We have to win without healing. It's going to be really hard to do that. We have to do it. We have no choice. Here we are. Terrible! <laughs> I was really counting on that hitting the Guardian a bit more. Oh no. It's all over, chat. <laughs> Terrible. Oh, we're so hosed. Still looking better in hindsight? Um... Yes. Yes, it is, admittedly. At least we're not frail. But I have to use my swift pot early. Hate that. How many characters do I think will be inspired to? More than four. That's my guess. No potion for the boss here. Am I desperate enough to take a concentrate? Or a distraction? I might be. Let's see how this works if we don't get more energy. So let's try it. But we could just die on turn two or turn four here. With a turn one like this, I think it's quite likely. Okay, so far so good. That's what we need to do here. First and bouncing flask get taken. I guess there's worse fates than that. Should probably focus on picking off these minions. But work. Okay, that helps. That helps a lot. Still the one who had burst first. Turn looks kind of bad. Oh yeah, they are all attacking, huh? Spooky. Good. Good, okay, okay.
I think we can block Hyper Beam, thanks to the footwork. But can we keep blocking after that? I have no idea. Zara. Keep burst and skewer. Note how we haven't managed to do a whole lot of damage here, and that part's not very good. Flask. I'm going to need to start doing poison here if we're going to win this fight. Damage numbers only go up and up and up from here. Oh, shoot. Can only block 24, taking 6. Uh, acro for deflect, maybe. Concentrate, that works too. There we go. Shuffle Bouncing Flask back in the draw pile. Then Poison Stab. Keep my best blocks. Only gets harder and harder. 18 by 2. Looks like we're still good for this turn, at least. Uh, 36. Keep this. Gonna have to block the next Hyper Beam. That part I don't like the idea of very much, but at least we can burst, uh... Dodge and roll here, maybe. trying to keep burst and concentrate and I can do burst acro next turn by bottom deck acro we die burst concentrate is skewer yeah no uh, if you try to burst concentrate here you discard every card in your hand so don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, I think we're keeping Burst and Concentrate, hoping for Acro next turn. There's a 1 in 6 chance we don't get it, which would kill us. We have to gamble, though. Ah, uh, we're dead. GG. First, concentrate. I don't necessarily think it was the copy dripper that uh, killed us. Not being able to rest wasn't really the problem. The problem was that that was the second hyper beam. That was the problem. We did not find a good enough damage plan. We had the one burst bouncing flask, but never saw any other poison we could use. 
and ultimately all the skills we added caused our damage to fall behind. That was a little bit tough. Egg killed us because we didn't have enough attacks. Also, don't agree. Because if you look at the attacks we did get offered, you'll note that they were sort of shit. No offense to the attacks. We didn't take uh, Die Die Die, I guess. But it's not like I was skipping good attacks. I guess there was that other blade dance I didn't take, maybe. That too. Adding attacks does not make us uh, magically beat bosses. How do I feel about upgrading discovery to find a boss solution when you don't have one? That could have helped, actually. That could have helped. I don't think I ended up liking discovery enough. I don't feel like it bailed us out of any really important situations. So I don't think I would take discovery again as a starting bonus on silent. I think on silent, discovery is not good enough. On the other characters is good, but it's not good enough on Silent. If you're not fishing for Nightmare anyway. If you want to do Nightmare Alchemize stuff, it's it's great for that. Potentially, if we if we'd been able to save a potion for the boss, that definitely could have helped. Yeah, that definitely could have helped. I'm sure I took a little bit of unnecessary damage. I do wonder if this Chosen and Cultist fight could have gone better. <laughs> Alright, Twitch chat, let's do a quick break. And then we're going to go again on silent, trying to get some W's here. So back in a few minutes, Twitch chat, when I return, the silent, again, BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, thank you for hanging out. Let us embark upon a second journey. As silent here, we're back at a zero streak because life is hard. We're a lonely silent in a tough world. That last run was partially really tough because of the act layouts, actually. We had to make some really tough pathing choices. Our Niao bonus wasn't great either. This time we have some pretty good options. I like both 100 Gold Star and Choose a Rare card and Colorless card. They're all pretty good. Might be uh, Choose a Rare though for nine or for six max health. An Alchemize or Glass Knife or Die 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 on floor one makes such a big difference. Let's see, Doppelganger Burst Tools, interesting. I don't totally hate uh, Tools of the Trade early actually. This can enable a lot of discard synergies. I don't really love the others that much early on. Let's try Tools of Trade here. It's definitely not what I was looking for, but uh, it might be okay. Call that a bit of a low roll. We do have to beat Hexaghost at the end of the ball at the end of the act, which uh, Tools of Trade will definitely help in. Tools improves your deck cycling. How quickly you can redraw through all of your cards and see one card again. That's very good for stacking. Poison helps us discard burns, too. No poison here, though. Just a dagger spray. You take the damage over the not damage, that's for sure. Take a dagger spray. Asken, thanks for the 10 months of support. Do we insta-click Tactician and Reflex already? I don't think so. Wouldn't call them an insta-click. Sixteen. Looks like I'd better strike one time here. Double Cunning Potion. And we're fighting Hexaghost, right? So we're going to take this Deadly Poison as our first piece of answering the boss. Can I explain why Poison is usually the way to go against Hexaghost? Because uh, you have a large number of turns in which to defeat Hexaghost. And pretty much the only thing that matters is how much damage you can do in those nine turns. Um, since poison stacks on top of itself for damage per turn, uh, poison cards end up being a, a really significant total amount of damage in this fight compared to just about any other option Silent has. Direct physical attacks will not do as much as poison does. But poison is inherently a very effective tool for longer fights. Currently thinking something like this. Did we ever go this way? Get one more fight. Got two shiv potions, and I'm not afraid to use them. Is Thunderclap good with Immolate? Can be. Wouldn't call it automatically good, though. Or stinky quick slash. Don't hate a piercing whale. It does have utility in Hexaghost and uh, in X2 fights. Could be a little bit worse in the short term, but I don't have a better short term pick, really. So I guess I'm okay with one piercing whale. Enemies lose six strength for one turn. Sure, sure. Would have been good here. Dang it. Just take four. 
Take four is fine, I guess. We have Whale and Dagger Spray coming up. Surely something will fix our problems here. No, that didn't work. How's it going, Medic Dwarf? We haven't done any Spire with friends in a while. For our community days, I've been visiting other mods. Currently really liking the combination of biomes and Chimera cards. Gosh, these are bad. I guess Sucker Punch is fine. We definitely need more damage, so I'm willing to take a Sucker Punch to make the Elite more reasonable. We should be able to beat the Elite with two Shiv Potions, even if our damage is kind of bad. At least. Probably upgrade Dagger Spray first. Ooh, well, let's transform a Strike into better damage. It sure is better damage. We got a Terror. Excellent. Okay, damage problems partially resolved. What attacks am I looking for besides Sneaky Strike and Eviscerate? I'm looking for Predator. I'm looking for All Out Attack. I'm looking for Blade Dance. I'm looking for Lachettes sometimes. Backstab, Masterful Stab. Any of the rares, of course, but those are unlikely to be seen early. Dagger throw is usually pretty good. Potion that took up two potion slots and wins a hallway fight, like a smoke bomb that you get rewards for. That'd be kind of cool. I like the idea of a potion that takes two slots. I get an extra fight here. Easy fight, thankfully. Well, maybe not so easy. We have a potion to save eight. That's tempting. 40% chance to get a new potion, but these potions are too good for the elite fight, so I'll take the eight. No potion, good. Slice is okay. Yeah, actually, I like this slice with the terror and the tools of the trade. What's that, that? And I like that we're fighting Legavulin, where we can get the terror and the tools down relatively free. Honestly, accuracy just to go with the potions, not the worst idea in the world. Hey, wake up. So strike does nine, deadly poison does five plus four next turn, which is already nine, and then a bit more after that. And if we draw the Deadly Poison again, it does even more than that. We want Sucker Punch here. The, these are 27 damage. We could use both and win now. I think I'd rather you only use one, though. Try to do that. Well, if I'm going to use one, I should use it now before my strength gets penalized. We're definitely going to need to use one. All right, we get a Vajra plus one strength and, of course, a potion back. There's a sneaky strike, a deflect, and a dodge and roll. Okay, so Sneaky Strike with the tools of the trade does seem worthwhile, right? Let's try it. 
12 damage. If you have discarded a card this turn, gain two energy. And I love a Centennial Puzzle, which draws cards the first time we lose life during a fight. Do I want to rest? I don't think so. Hoping we can do this act without any resting required. Currently, I kind of like getting, especially with the additional draw, I like getting the energy upgrade on one of these two cards. Let's do uh, Terror Plus. So we can maybe play one more card on a turn. One-time energy upgrades can have a surprisingly big effect on your run. So I do recommend getting those. Especially if you've got lots of card draw. Bearish. Deccan tools of the trade. Interesting. I guess with the sneaky strike and the zero cost stuff, I don't hate an acrobatics here. Let's grab an acrobatics. Lean a little bit further into draw and discard. Hmm. This is bad. Let's go colorless potion. Even worse. Oh no. Bottom deck terror, even worse. -er. I think we're still okay though. Pretty sure we just kill next turn. Thanks to Centennial. looking for Sneaky Strike. How much damage do I have here? 20. Oh, you're just dead. Don't even need to... Cutting Potion. That's the power of Vajra with Terror. We... Exactly critical hit, and that's true regardless of whether the second Deadly Poison is a second copy that you've put in your deck, or if you just draw back to the first one and play it again. But I take Phantasmal Killer here for sure. I would definitely take Phantasmal Killer here. Don't think Choke is good enough. Nor Flying Knee. Find yourself reaching for Flying Knees? They're, they're okay. They are okay. The extra energy next turn is a useful effect all the way to the end of the game, so they're not too bad to have as part of your toolkit. Okay, I was debating whether I rest or not uh, with Dreamcatcher. I guess we're going to take the money and rest. Let's take the money and rest rather than... Or I could pay over 100 gold for an upgrade. I don't want to do that. Right, the difference here is 75 plus 70, 145 gold. It's a lot of gold. Nice. Please do hit me for one damage. This fight's not good. I'm going to use potions here if necessary. Hopefully it won't be necessary, though. No. Definitely not. Oh, actually, with a block potion, we don't even need to rest. It's also fumes and footwork here. Oh, my. Between Vajra and the Terror, I don't actually think we need to rely on the poison to beat Hexaghost. But work too greedy? I don't think so. I think that's a very reasonable footwork. No rest on six health. Not against Hexaghost. 
Against any other boss? Ye well, actually, no. In this position, I probably don't rest against Slime Boss either. I just go full aggro. Lose the Distilled Chaos, though. I don't trust that. And then we can upgrade... What? The footwork? No, we should upgrade damage for Hexa. Let's upgrade Sneaky Strike. To do four more base damage. Which turns into a ton of total damage. With uh, Terror. Well, in this fight is basically... Oh, heck. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, kill Hexaghost before they kill us, which just got a lot harder with this draw. Yikes. Okay, we're fine. I think. We might not be fine. This may not be fine at all. Oh, no, you don't. One. Nope. Yeah, 25 damage per sneaky strike is pretty good. Next turn could be tough. Oh no, I draw my blocks again. Uh oh. Yeah, we might be dead next turn. We're good. We got, we got piercing well. We are okay for a moment, but then not so good momentarily. We just dead next turn. That we kill here. Oh, we're okay. We're okay. We didn't draw all the burns together, thankfully. Cool. Think we win this fight. Despite the draw order. That was scary. That was a scary fight. Don't even need the shiv potion, Twitch chat. Never worried once in my life. Easy peasy. Sweet Christ on a cracker. <laughs> How does he do it? So yeah, even even with a bad draw order, yes, we beat Hexaghost without resting. It's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. Hey there, Red Wins. We are moving on from Ironclad streaking for the moment, but we did not get to 20 wins. Our best was 11. In our attempting. And Venom's kind of interesting in that we already have some poison and we got lots of attacks. But none of our attacks hit a ton of time. So the Envenom is a little bit of damage for a lot of energy, which is not great. I'm wondering about Doppelganger here for banking energy and draw into a future turn. I like Doppelganger just fine. Unload is pretty weak. Let's try a double. Hmm, we don't have zero cost cards, right? Not really. Well, our options are Pandora's Box, Transform All Strike and Defend cards. Wristblade does basically nothing. And Ring of the Serpent says we draw one more card every turn. Ring of the Serpent plus Tools of the Trade, actually kind of cool. But this certainly feels like, to me, a good situation to try transforming cards with the Pandora's box. And if we don't get something half-decent, then we're in real trouble. Pandora's box, in my eyes, often needs a couple upgrades, a couple removes to feel good, but we have lots of money, so if we can get to a shop in early Act 2, uh, things should be pretty good. First Blade does extra damage one time with a Shiv Potion, that's true. What do I like about Silent that makes her different from the rest? 
Silent can often play a more defensive play style where she tries to slowly whittle down enemies with uh, sort of passive damage or damage over time. I, I quite like that. Okay, block cards gone. In place is full damage. We've got Accuracy, Blade Dance, Storm of Steel, Dadadai and Predator, Second Slice, Second Terror, and an Envenom to go with it. That's kind of cool. Uh, we don't have any block cards. Our footwork just became terrible. <laughs> Should have taken a leg sweep. But we do have good damage, and that's okay. And we can hit not one, but two shops. Love to see it. Although, if I go to the second one, we're going to an elite fight. So, maybe don't go to the second one. Yeah, I don't mind that Pandora's box at all. Easy to point out that we have no block, but remember, if we don't have block, it means we do have something else. In this case, lots of damage. To our face on turn one. damage can I do here? Let's see. It's a Storm of Steel. Shivs are 5 base with bull that goes to 7. So shivs are 7 apiece. So we can do 3 shivs plus 5 shivs, right? Seven by eight plus twenty seven. No, more than twenty seven plus uh, thirty. Seven by eight plus thirty is eighty six. That's not a kill. I know we can't stun either because. Three shivs plus five shivs plus three shivs is not 14. What about slice over a shiv? That would do slightly more damage. Yes, that would do slightly more. That would be... Is that exact lethal then? Hold on. That might be exact lethal. Because this will be seven by three, 21. This is 10. Then we have Concentrate, Predator, Dagger Spray, Footwork get discarded. So that's another 28 from four more shivs. 39, 39 plus 30. Wait, not 39. Get 39, hold on, that's not right. 21 plus 10 plus 28. 59 plus 30, 89. And that's exactly 89. Yes, with the slice over the shiv, twist chat, good find. We have an exact kill here, and I'm freaking taking it. Power of Vajra. Block card or gamble card? Gamble card a bit too good with Centennial. Taking the gamble. Stinky Thieves! I already had a Piercing Whale anyway, apparently. Wait, did I click on the wrong card? No, yeah, yeah. I had a Piercing Whale anyway. <clears throat> Forgot what was in my deck for a second there. Alright, hit me. Terror Plus and Sneaky Struck in the Drill Pile and Concentrate. Let's acro here. Yeah, the Terror Plus. Good. Did I ever get them both? Doesn't look like it. Does not look like it. 
Very well. Take 11, then. We've had first footwork, yes, but what about second footwork? Unfortunately, footwork is no good unless we have cards that actually say gain block on them, which we currently do not have. So I won't be taking that card. Ooh. Apotheosis is here. Problem is, so is Gremlin Horn. Wait, do I have enough? I have exactly enough money for Apotheosis Gremlin Horn? Holy. Let me just double check that. That's exactly 480. Yeah, that's a sign. That is a sign. That's definitely a sign. I like Apotheosis a lot with Pandora's Box. Non-starter cards tend to have better upgrades than starter cards. And so the upgrades are more valuable. Is my usual philosophy. All right, we definitely go. don't go this way then. Hmm. I think I want this curse today. We're a little bit behind. We could use some more advantage. And we have extra cards on turn one, so we can afford one dead draw. Let's get a tungsten rod. Apparently. You know, blocking is not really my thing, Mr. Sneko. Hmm. I was hoping for that accuracy. Although, is this a kill anyway? One ship plus with weaken. There's seven... What are they each? Seven times 1.5 times 0.75 is seven. Seven times eight is enough, right? Wait. 56 plus six. Oh no. 62. Uh, but I can blade dance first. That'll do it. Yeah, this is the way. Uh, and then turn all those into shift pluses. There we go. Joink. Time for a break. And the break says upgrade apotheosis. And then the second break says have a nap. Excuse you, lady. Heal one is actually... Wait, we don't take anything. I don't want that? Hmm. Oh, well. Let's see what happens here. Yeah... Not quiet. Another acrobatics? Let's 
go with yes. Yes, we do. And I definitely am not going this way. That's crazy. We're going to go this way and rest. Get a card reward here. Backflip's pretty good. We're definitely looking for more block cards. And if the block cards also draw, all the better. Bottled Lightning will save us. What about Bag of Marbles? Will Bag of Marbles save us by making our enemies vulnerable on turn one, allowing us to score easy kills on them? Or will I fail to draw any damage on turn one, thus completely breaking the fight? Hmm. Yeah, Bag of Marbles not doing much here, that's for sure. Debating playing Acro, looking for more stuff, but I'm not sure what I would achieve. We can't even do enough damage to get a kill with a Fire Potion. Not good. Okay, we got Slice Dagger Spray. I think that is enough, actually. Good. Get him, Dagger Spray. Get him, Fire Potion. Sneaky Strike. Can't do 22, right? No. So we probably play Survivor now. Seems fine. Take uh, only four. Good fight. Get a lizard tail, reviving us if we would die. Reflexes here. Let's see. Discard, discard, discard. Yeah, we have so much discard. This is great. Hard draw. And lizard tail is block. Unfortunately, I didn't get enough money to remove the writhe here. I was kind of hoping I'd be able to afford that, but there was no money in the chest. So let's not even bother with the shop here. Just keep, uh, just keep riding, I guess. Let the card draw next turn. Feels bad to not play Dagger Spray, but I think it's correct here. Having more than one terror ain't half bad. Oh yeah, this deck is starting to feel a lot better. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're cooking with mayonnaise now. Hobbles, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Do I want backstab with bag of marbles? Normally, yes, but we're already through all the fights where it really matters. I'll skip these. Let's take an event. Ooh, Red Mask Gang. We can have double debuffs on turn one. I'm not going to give you guys a nice amount of money. I'm going to fight. Well, maybe that was Acro, actually. Hmm. Bear terrorized. Bearerized. Hmm. 
Hmm. Knew I should have taken a hit on turn one. Oh well. If I accuracy Storm of Steel, does that kill Bear? Let's see, that'd be nine, 13 apiece. No. No. If you kill Romeo on turn one, does it prevent the debuff from Bear? Also, no. No, it does not. All right, we get the red mask. Enemies are weak on turn one. And if we want one, we can have another blade dance. And I think we actually do because of accuracy here. And in Venom. Yeah. Bear, yes. Hmm. A book, you say? I like reading. Hell yeah. Take one damage, how about no damage? Take two damage, how about one damage? Three damage, how about two damage? And now we get our Nilri's Codex. That's right, in worst case scenario here we have Lizard Tail, so we're probably not ever dying. Can also heal 12 or choose one of 20 cards. I want to look at cards for Tactician. Malaise is here, Wraith Form is here. How about a Wraith form? Rarely do you see rares in this event. A freaking Wraith form. The knitting. And I'll take a corpse explosion too. Time, huh? Mm. Need to get the critical stuff in play right now. We don't have a lot of tanking ability against Champ. For some mysterious reason. Yeah, we might just be taking hits to the face. That's no good. Gotta get these powers down. And anything that exhausts must go. Save second terror for phase two, maybe. Take that too, that's another block card. So I've got fear pot for phase two if I need it. half health. Currently at 235. So yeah. Let's stop here. Let's 
go. Predator, Blade Dance. Blade Dance again. Backflip, Storm of Steel. We're still intangible here for the Execute. Not that he gets to do it. Not a bad champ fight at all. Not too bad. Intacular. BG. That wasn't so bad. Take another X cost card malaise to give us more ways to block. I do like that. I don't really feel like I need another die 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 or another storm of steel. So yeah, let's take a malaise here. Snapping strength off enemies can't be bad, surely. Yeah, where's the Chemex when you need, when you need it? Hmm. Pandora's box into Astrolabe? How curious. These are my choices. We never saw any energy relics this run. On silent. Those are tough runs. I don't hate uh, transform upgrade 3, though. I would transform... The upgrades don't matter that much, but we can we can get rid of some of our stinky cards, like Deadly Poison. Huh. Invenom? I guess I'll keep Invenom. Maybe Curse of the Bell is better here. Just give me more relics. Definitely don't trust Sneko Eye. No, I don't trust the Sneko Eye at all. So why don't we do the uh, Culling Bell? We'll get another curse here, the Curse of the Bell, but three relics, one common, one uncommon, one rare. And those could really change things for us. Akabeko Ink Bottle Ice Cream. I like all of these. Akabeko for more damage on turn one with the Bag of Marbles. Ink Bottle for a consistent card draw. And Ice Cream to keep energy between turns, which can do some fun things, especially with Doppelganger. Ice cream concentrate. Yeah, I like that ice cream. Just give me a tactician now, hey? Spooky. Let's also go this way. Removing Writhe seems necessary earlier rather than later. Let's remove Writhe early. You gotta get rid of that card. And then I'm not afraid of Reptomancer because of Gremlin Horn, so we shouldn't have too hard a time in the Elites this act. Giant Head could maybe be an issue, but I think I can kill Giant Head pretty fast. Take five. Yes. Sir? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Need a few more block cards. Maybe too many cards in the deck. Maybe. This is not the turn one you want to see. Hello? There's Dagger Spray. The damage. Okay, then Concentrate, Corpse Explosion. They're actually just dead turn one. Glorious. Good fight. Argus Blarg. Did you hear about the trial of the jurisprudential fetishist? He got off on a technicality. That's excellent. That is excellent. <laughs> spoon, huh? Now, Spoon with Shivs is not very good. Uh, this shop is not very good. Let's remove Writhe. Ah. 
All right, bye. Apparently that's all I wanted. Footwork or Predator? Just to footwork save one energy. Got the cream. Let's use the cream. Gotta be able to answer this turn. Not good otherwise. That's more like it. Okay, cool. Perfect. Now I'll take bullet time. Playing that for ink bottle here. Great form time. Really cool how this silent run has transformed. I mean, literally transformed. Um, starting as trying to do poison things and then shifting into physical damage and then shifting into shivs and now building a weird block engine. It's fun. Quite fun. Spear pot is never going to be good. I got two terrors. Speaking of terrors, I negotiate with terrorists. Thank you so much for 42 months of support. It was really quick to fight these two. Maybe I shouldn't have been. Drew Wraith form on turn one, huh? Definitely shouldn't have been so quick to fight them. Well, we'll see how this goes, I suppose. Uh, I don't think I care about footwork. Okay, Corpse Explosion's a good start. This is going to hurt a lot. And then I'm going to die. All right, good talk. Well, they're going to die, but then I'm going to die. But I get a fruit juice, so it was totally worth it. Also, Tingsha, whenever we discard a card, deals some damage to a random enemy. And definitely not bad. We want to deflect a dodge roll, a corpse explosion, or nothing. I'm going to go with nothing here. I've already got 37 cards in this deck. Let's let the Tingsha do some work. I wish this was a Reptomancer. Really do. fast there.
I'm gonna take one on purpose here. For Centennial. Keep the blur for next turn. Absolutely have to stay weakened. Good. More cards. Get rid of this, I guess. Perfect. Here we go. Can do Predator or Blur Survivor to help me block next turn. I'd like to just get back to the Wraith form, so let's go Predator here. Also really big damage. Nice. Keep these two. Storm of Steel was also very good damage there. good. We good. <laughs> Preserved insect. Okay. Future elites will be a bit easier to kill. And I don't think I want any of these. Should probably rest, given that we're at 13 health. I don't want to lose the Lizard Tail until we're in Act 4. Ideally, I don't want to lose it ever, but, you know, it'd be nice if we got to use it. Prepared Plus does 6 damage? Get in here. Excuse you. I'm blocking over here. So we lose the sneaky, huh? Ouch. Thank you for not killing me with 45 this turn. Contribution is greatly appreciated. All right. There's a Tactician. If this card is discarded from your hand, gain an energy, an energy that we get to keep. This might just work, Twishat. This might just work. Oh, can't take Paper Crane, unfortunately. We have to take the Sapphire Key. That relic's quite good, making Weaken stronger. Ding, ding. Here. 
So incoming this turn is 25 plus 12 from the Constrict. We have to block 37 to full block. Seems hard to do. Seems hard to do. I do have malaise at least. Not too bad. I'll just be a ghost now, if you don't mind. Hurt this. One more calculated gamble, they do massive damage in addition to being very useful draw cards. I like that. Let me catch up with thank yous here. Penguin with a knife, thanks for six months. Why does the Dungeoneer hear chimes? They drank a Tingsha. With both Apotheosis and Dreamcatcher, isn't resting borderline better than smithing? Yeah, the card reward can help quite a bit. We've seen that happen uh, already this run. We've got a Burning Elite coming up. Yeah, let's rest again here. We can recall it the final fire. Don't feel like I need more attacks right now, but these are kind of nice. Dolly's Mirror. I don't hate a second footwork here. I do not hate a second footwork. Panache does cute things. I think I would take second footwork. Now that we have some decent block cards. Time to remove deadly poison. We could do that. I'm probably going to wait for that. Not even one Repto, huh? Cowardly lady. We've had first ray form, yes. Okay, this is an easy giant head with two ray forms. Easy peasy. Although this turn looks iffy. Turn is definitely iffy. Thank goodness for Oracalcum. Stone Periapt is our final relic. That's kind of whatever. I don't hate an escape plan, I guess. With all the dexterity that we have, it could block for a decent amount. That maneuver wasn't horrible either. Any help for Ascension 18 Act 1 with Silent? You ran three times in a row in a forced first elite, and it went 
three times Lagavulin and you were short on damage. Oof. That is that is tough. Um That is partially bad luck. The the floor six elite is definitely a challenge with silent. Um, in preparing for Lagavulin specifically, I do recommend early sneaky strikes if you find them, as this is good damage even at minus two or minus four strength. Um, quick slash, dagger throw are okay as well. Predator is really good. Any big single hit you can find early kind of helps with that. But yes, Lagavulin first is, is really tough on Ascension 18 Silent. It's, it's definitely tough. Time Eater would be a disaster. Don't forget, we have Ice Cream and we have Malaise. So Time Eater is a wimpy little slug who can't damage anything. That one's not great, though. I'm going to use Piercing Whale yet. I'm not going to play well laid plans unupgraded either. Doesn't feel good. Give me 10 cards. My Boothworks are unupgraded. Don't like it. Could try to build up more energy. Minus um, <clears throat> minus eight seems pretty good, though. Play another power or two now. Nice attack, nerd. Another one. Why not save Terror for the second phase? Because I'm just looking to exhaust everything that I can. So that we can cycle through the deck more quickly. But get rid of Die, Die, Die here. Let's save some energy. Get another Piercing Whale. I'll use it here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is this overkill? This might be overkill. Now we can start playing powers since we can counteract the strength gain. That'll let us set up better for phase two. Oops, no, we're fine still. We're totally fine.
to hold on to Wraith form for phase two here. Okay, looking really good here. We can one has zero strength in phase two. We have lots of energy so we can malaise them if we wish to. Just gonna Wraith form. Good fight, Awaken One. All right, who's next? It's Time Eater, the stinky slug who hits for zero damage. Although we drew malaise on turn one, which is going to complicate matters. Guess we could call and we footwork to start. The fewer cards we play against this enemy, the better things will go for us. Every 12 cards we play, Time Eater will gain some strength. Oh, that's bad. Hmm. Alright, we're retaining one this fight. Or this two. Definitely concerning. <clears throat> Gemba. Here we go. Perfect. Could be fine with that crow here.
Big Zero. Three cards. Hmm. Ouch. Not the three cards I was hoping for. However, it does look like we're good now. I could even malaise immediately. Interesting. Ooh, that'll save me some health right now. Alright, Stinky Slug does no damage. Get wrecked, Stinky Slug. Sure. I'm gonna hold on to Wraith Worm for safety now. going raptor yeah we're moving on from clad for now trying our hand at silence we'll be back to clad at some point how's it going autumn auto monadic welcome welcome lsr is silder hair says which is more powerful generally karen's ashes or tingsha so it's pretty common when i pick up karen's ashes that it does a thousand or more damage over the course of the run if we if we look at uh relic stats Tingsha is the only damage relic I've seen go over 2000 Tingsha in a deck that's properly synergistic with it does way more damage than Karen's Ashes because you can just keep playing calculated gamble over and over again that said, I think in the average Ironclad deck, Karen's Ashes will outperform the average Tingsha, but Tingsha definitely has the higher upper end. So I would probably I would probably nominate Tingsha as the the higher potential at minimum. You can do some stuff. More after images, why not? Nahuzla, thank you so much for the prime sub of the 17 months. My vacay messed up your streak. Oh, no. It's truly a dark day. Oh, you're doing the thing anyway, right? So I should just play through more cards. One, two, uh, three. Keep terror race form. Foolish, foolish. Yes, all Wraith form. Me too, Glurber Flurpist. Really excited uh, with the Spire 2 news. Really excited about that. The big deal. Try to set up Ink Bottle for next act. 
see what we can do here. Not much. There goes Time Eater. GG. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this unused lizard tail? Pair your daggers. Feeling 1919. A good year. Infrared Eclipse says, fun question, what would I think about a relic? Pick 10 cards to have at the start of combat. So you choose a, a 10 card opening hand, but double boss health. Sounds like suicide for many decks. Depends on when you say pick 10, do you mean 10 cards you already have or 10 cards from all available cards? Because if it's 10 from what you already have, probably not good enough to counter a uh, double health heart. At least. I'm missing a lot of health. I'm going to rest here. I guess we can finally remove Deadly Poison. Or we could take second tools if we wanted, but I, I think we just removed Deadly Poison here. We have way too many cards. We got 43 cards. It's a lot of cards. Could go for a different potion. None of these potions are really good. Speed potion's okay. All right, how do we do against shield and spear? This could go either way, depending on the draws here. Certainly wouldn't call this a good draw. Hmm. A laser for two seems pretty important, actually. That'll help us a lot next turn. And then we can concentrate Predator. And then I draw more cards. That also sounds good. I'm gonna turn around. Uh, fine. Excellent piercing whale draw. Ding ding. Rickin again, please. Looks like we're good. Yeah, we good. This is nine. Okay, so just do this. Sweet. 52 health into heart sounds great to me. We get ink bottle set up as well. War paint Snecka Oil aren't exactly exciting. I guess Snecka Oil is probably better than Poison Potion in that we can at least use it to draw a bunch of cards if we really need to. Razor, thanks for the full year of support. 
And Melting Pot with four months. What element is a girl's future best friend? Carbon. Carbon is a girl's best friend. That's what they say. Yeah, let's lose this poison potion. Play tools. Blur seems like a decent idea. Blur seems like a decent idea. I could play Storm of Steel. That sounds like a bad idea. Too many shivs to play. Take a leg sweep. Alright, big hit is first. It is very spooky. You live. I think I'm going to use the Sneka Oil now, though. Did not really help. Got rid of the Void, at least. There's a malaise in the draw pile we can use to avoid getting killed here. Really like to do that. Please. Okay, not a lot of offensive progress made, but we have the Lizard Tail still. And we have some powers in play. Here's uh, Willie Plans, that helps. Definitely apply Sucker Punch now. Lose the Blade Dance then. We can live a bit longer. Okay, here we go. Now we can start to do damage. Took a while. Definitely that took a while. Still not a lot of damage. Not yet. Keep adding those. I'm going to need them. here. Accuracy Predator, keep Is that uh, Piercing Whale, Blade Dance, I think. Piercing Whale blocks the next multi-hit. Means I can't gamble this hand. That's correct. Unless I need to. Looks like I might need to. All right.
Sweep the leg. Why was the slime two cost? We used a snack a whale. And it made the slime two cost. Valid question. Um, I'd like to avoid using Wraith Form here if possible. First. Now we can shiv, now we can shiv. Got it. Easy game every time. Just keep piercing whale, and we are golden here. Six by fifteen. How about zero by fifteen? And still have Wraith Worm, which ended up being unnecessary. Ding ding. The bell tolls for thee. Mr. Hard. GG. Should have checked to see how much damage Tingsha was just in the final fight. But yeah, uh, people were asking, what does damage more, Karen's Ashes or Tingsha? Tingsha's here at 100 damage per combat. It's very hard to make Ashes do 100 damage per combat. GG. GG. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. Leonardville, thanks for the prime sub in the 17 months. Keep those whales coming. Was a fun one. GG at 2769. Not bad. Why did I take beat of death damage after it was dead? Yeah, you still do. And yes, you can die to that. And if you kill the heart and then the beat of death kills you, you lose the run. Because uh, screw you, apparently. I think I've seen that happen to one player in all of my hours of Spire where they killed the heart and died at the same time. Aaron W says, what intimidated me most about heart when I first saw it? Oh, I, I remember this. Easy. I played like three or four disarms against it, and then it purged all of the strength down, and I was terrified. <laughs> I had a uh, Dead Branch Corruption deck, and we only barely won because I didn't know about the Strength Purge. Yeah, what has it been done? The Spire sleepeth, and so shall I.
Did Branch Corruption barely won? Yeah, just, just barely. And yes, before we switch games, Twitch chat, we're going to play the Seed of the Week. I think it's a defect. Do I think we'll get more lore in Spire 2? Yeah, I think so. Just by, by nature of events, right? They're going to have events that have text in them that are flavorful with regards to the Spire. So surely there will be more lore in Spire 2. How much lore? I have no idea. There's a game where a tie goes to the player. In um, in FTL Faster Than Light, you and the flagship can die at the same time, and then the winner is decided by whoever finishes exploding first. Whoever's fully dead first, that's, that's who loses. <laughs> Inevitable Fern, thanks for the Prime sub in the two months. Excited for Spire 2? You betcha. Query Yui Up says, in Slice and Dice, a tie means you win. So Twitch chat, in a few minutes, we're going to play the Seed of the Week, playing as some defects. Seed of the Week is sort of a community effort where multiple players play runs of Slay the Spire on the same seed, so we can compare and contrast results from different play styles, different players. Does it matter which character for Seed of the Week? Yes. Yes, it does. Um, the, each seed specifies the character we're playing. Uh, this week it's going to be Defect. So everyone plays on Defect. Currently we're just doing uh, Ironclad Silent Defect seeds. The, uh, the poll that was run voted to reject Watcher from the Seed of the Week for now. See, the week is exciting. Um, I'm excited to to see it continue into Spire 2 when that releases. Because it should be just as easy to do in Spire 2. Should be fun. How long do I expect a silent 20 streak to take? It could take my entire life. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know if I can do it. But we're going to try. Do I think they should keep save scumming in Spire 2? Yeah, I think you should have the ability to, to quit back out. Realistically, save scumming is kind of a necessary consequence. You, you can't have the game writing save data every microsecond you're playing. So it has to choose intervals at which to actually record what's going on. And it's a single-player game, so I, I like that the option is available to the player. They patched the iOS version to do that, and it's miserable, says P. Scott. Really, you can save, you can quit out of a, a run, and you'll you'll pop back into the same turn of combat you were in. It's kind of cool, actually. How much easier does save scumming make an A20 run? Not that much easier. If you if you you can save scum your way through fights to to like save a hit point here or there or um you know undo a mistake here and there, but at some point if you're not making good overall pathing and deck building decisions, you'll you'll hit a point where no amount of save scumming can get you through the fight that kills you because you have a bad draw turn one against slavers or your deck just can't beat the boss you're against. My 
My personal favorite use for save scumming is to save your one relic run attempts from having picked up a relic. <laughs> save and quit. Put the relic back down. If I could relive a single run in my Spire career, what would it be? The Blasphemy Vault incident, for sure. Blasphemy Vault. We had a uh, Lesson Learned plus Searing Blow. And I've never had that combination since. I wanted to see how high it was going to get, but I messed it up. But I don't regret how that run died at all, because it made for better content than if it had lived. But it was a one-of-a-kind run, to be sure. That's a good question, Superman. I, I wonder if you were using some kind of seed search, what would be the earliest you could assemble Lesson Learned Searing Blow from a vanilla seed? That's a good question. Surely you could have, like... Start with a random rare, getting lesson learned, and then the first shop has prismatic shard, and then the first card reward, or very shortly after that, has searing blow. So you could do it in Act One. That sounds fun. My hype to bite Spire too. Oh yeah, definitely. Also hyped to take a quick break here, Twitch chat. I'm gonna refill my legs, stretch my water for just a couple minutes. When I return. We're playing the Defect Seed of the Week. Back in a few.
All right, Twitch chat, we're back. So, the seed of the week. Is, uh, STS-2, apparently. So we're going to play STS-2 right now. Here, live on stream for the first time. That's the defect. What awaits us, Twitch chat? Today's the day. Hmm. This looks a lot like the first game, actually. Mysterious. The Guardian is going to be our boss here in Act 1. What are the starting options? Ooh, Cullis card, max health, remove 2, or boss swap. Interesting. Not exactly what I would call strong starting choices. I guess Inspire 2, all of the good Meow bonuses have been removed. Colorless card seems unreliable. How good is Colorless card on defect, I wonder? Hmm. Dark Shackles and Panic Button are good. Some of the attacks are okay. Self Repair is good, or uh, Bandage Up is good. I don't think there's that many I would want, though. Panacea is kind of cool. I am a remove two monkey on the defect. I definitely see this being a remove two start. Having to pay a lot of health for it, though, I don't love. If this was remove two for max HP or money, I'd probably do it. Yeah, exactly. Remove two usually great, but that's a lot of damage. Indeed. Vibrating Sheep says, I've started the arc of my Spire Curve where I mass mash boss swap every time you play Defect. You know, might not be wrong. Might not be wrong. We'll play. What's our boss swap today? Looks like it's a Sozu. Just actually not as bad as I had uh, maybe previously felt as a boss swap. It means we have no potions for the whole run, but we do have more energy. And that energy can go quite a long way. So I'm not exactly upset by a Sozu swap. It's uh, not ideal, certainly, but maybe not bad. Hey there, Dysnomia. The top quality of life mod I would recommend is called uh, Minty Spire. We don't use that one on stream, um, but it's uh, available on the Steam Workshop. And basically, Minty Spire gives you uh, a lot of like math quality of life. It sums up enemy damage on your character. It reminds you of relics that are going to add to to effects. <clears throat> Let's you know when your pen nib is uh, fully charged with a very bright visual effect and other stuff like that. So I find Minty Spire is a really good way to maybe start learning the game. Or just get some visual assistance if you need it. Seems almost too good, but you'll check it out. Yeah, I recommend it. It's... uh. It's really nice. So do I ever want to start out on this side? I don't think so. I think we're going something like this. Maybe this. I think I'd rather have less combats for the elite, because we're not getting a potion no matter what, right? Let's start out this way. 
With the power of four energy, I can block and attack at the same time. So how do I approach the run differently knowing that I'll never get potions? It means that I have to have answers to every fight in the deck. I can't use a potion to patch up a weakness. That's just cruel. Um, I can't use a potion to patch up a weakness in the deck for something like the champ fight because I, ha I have to use cards that we have. Uh, so that does become a bit tricky. That's just cruel. <laughs> All right, I'll take a charge battery over a beam cell, I guess. They're both kind of whatever on four energy, but I like extra block with Sozu. Want a little bit more block density because you don't have any potions to bail out your bad draws. Let's do defend, strike, strike here. That way, if we redraw the dual cast before we, we redraw the zap, then we can still dual cast this lightning. I'll take a Frost Orb. Certainly you don't want two charge batteries. Hmm. Yeah, we should play this game. We can rest if need be. We don't have a good upgrade yet. Click. Ow. Ow. Worth it. That's a lot of health, but that was worth it for Aura Calcum, which gives us six block if we end our turn without any. Very useful in a couple elite fights, especially Gremlin Knob. Especially alongside Frost. Yeah, we definitely need to go for the rest site now. Oh. The greatest tragedy here is that I have no uncommon cards to donate for a full heal. So we can't get a full heal. What a weird seed this is. We have to give up a card. No, have to. You cannot choose not to remove a card at this event unless you glitch the UI. I guess with Orichalcum, I'm going to remove a defend here. Although with Guardian coming up, maybe that wasn't completely wise. I do like Orichalcum as a disaster mitigation effect. I don't think we need to charge battery here. So if we if we draw a hand of no blocks, we have an out. Another potion we don't get. We're looking for damage still, so I think this ball lightning is mandatory. Reinforced body is a very cool block card, but currently we need more damage output. So... We rest before the elite? I think so. I think that's just the safer play here. Definitely could take more than 28 to a bad draw against Grumlin Knob. And our best upgrade is what? Three more damage? That's not huge. How's it going, that other Max? Welcome, welcome. Again, resting really necessary because without any potions, we don't have a, a good elite answer. What we do have, however, is four energy per turn, and that goes a very long way. Hmm. Let's get rid of a Cinder's Bane here. 
Get some orbs in play. Uh, this would be a good turn to wake up, right? <clears throat> I've got a full block next turn with dual cast, charge, battery, defend. Let's wake up right now. And then elites, just by virtue of um, having four energy, are quite a bit easier here. You have an energy swap on the defect. Flap. All right, we win. Get a dream catcher, of course, of course. And wow. White noise makes a random power. Electro for two turns our lightning into AoE. Cool headed, another source of frost. Really like Electro this early. Not useful against the boss, but two energy. Two lightning orbs is still two lightning orbs. Two cost a lot easier to put in play because of Sozu and because of Orichalcum as well. It's also a pretty good upgrade. One more Lightning Orb. This equates to uh, eight additional damage to all enemies, usually. So I value it quite a lot. Do I want to go to a shop? I think so. I like this path. Could also go an upgrade heavy path, although I don't know why we would when we have no good upgrades. Yeah, there's no reason to go that way. To the shop. Money? Lots of money. Nice. And a strike dummy, which says cards that say strike do more damage. Here's the thing. I was going to remove all of those. Although I actually removed a defend first. And I think we're going to want help in act two. So yeah, I'll take this. Deputy Dong, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. I mean, it helps a ton in this fight, right? And just, just for this fight, the strike dummy is worth having. Plus three. Six. Full block, by the way. And then we get exact lethal here. So instantly, we save 19 health. Just saying. Ooh, a chill and rebound. Let's get a chill. Really like chill for filling up the frost orbs. Yeah, say thank you, strike dummy. And, excuse me, and uh, thank you, Baylor, for removing a defend instead of a strike first on this run. That, that, that choice also uh, at the um, Bonfire Spirits made that moment there. Oh, brutal. Hmm. Don't have any reason to buy a Chemex yet. But I also don't have any reason not to buy a Chemex. It's 
not like my money is better spent on Juzu bracelet, right? Or or potion belt. <laughs> so all of these relics are competing for worst here. But the Chemex at least has some chance of doing something good later. And Defect has three different X cost cards. So there's actually pretty good odds it uh, does become relevant. We already have Electro, which makes both Multicast and Tempest a lot better also. So I really do like this Chemex. And yeah, the other thing is that there's nothing else to buy here. We remove and we can Chemex. I can't buy the potions. None of these cards are good. None of the relics do anything. So yeah, remove and... Remove and Chemex. I'm going to remove one more defend now that we have Strike Dummy. Could buy a charge battery. Nah. Is saving gold ever the play there? Honestly, it's it's probably more correct than the Chemex. Very likely to be more correct than Chemex. Everybody chill. I like grabbing a cool headed uh, already on four energy here. It's a good upgrade for draw. Helps in Guardian too. Zippin' and a zappin'. Yeah, Act 1 without potions really doesn't feel that bad. Because of the additional energy in my, in my experience. Compile Driver is more card draw, since we have Lightning and Frost in plenty. Very unlikely that we have three of the same orb, actually, unless we just played either Chill or Electro. So this is great. I would take two to three more of those. Let's see. Do we want a combat or an event now? Combat's not that rewarding since we can't take potions. Could look for an X cost card, I suppose. But the odds are pretty low. Event could be a removal or an upgrade or something. That's pretty nice. Could be a relic. Or it could be nothing. Nothing always a possibility. If we get nothing, I suppose we're not disappointed. We should be fine into the Guardian as we are. Sure, let's do an event. What's our rare card chance? Good question. What is our rare card chance? 18.5% actually to see one from a regular combat. So we have decent odds of getting a rare card from that combat. That's a good good thing to call out actually. Seems too low a chance for me, right? One in five to see a rare card, and then maybe another one in three to get a one I actually want to take. Let's take an upgrade. Upgrade's good. Let's upgrade uh, Cool Headed. And then another upgrade. Which might actually just be on Charge Battery. I do like upgrading block cards on Defect. I think it really helps going into Act 2 to have one or two upgraded blocks. Defect card pool is full of very good block cards that really slap with an upgrade, like Auto Shields, Charge Battery, Equilibrium, Leap. Don't sleep on Leap. 
Dual cast is also a reasonable upgrade here. Get the energy discount. We have good draw now that we upgraded the cool headed and have compiled rubber. So this would allow us to play another card on many turns. I don't think that's a bad idea either. An Ali CL, what do you call it when wizards perform one on one combat? A duel where you cast. All right, we'll upgrade the dual cast. I do like that as an upgrade. I think we'll, we'll find sometimes that it doesn't actually do anything. That's okay. Go cold snap electro here. And then I think defend, then cool headed. So that the defend is back in the draw pile again. Hmm. Kind of wishing that a uh, charge battery was upgraded. I see, right? We removed two defends. That's why this feels weird. We have a lot of health, though, and the Guardian won't last long. I think we're fine. We also have Orichalcum, in case we totally brick. I'm not worried here. Although we are going to take 20, 30 damage in winning this fight, probably. 19... 18... Take one here. Yeah, this turn's not great. So here's an example of why dual cast upgrade was maybe not the right choice. Note how we already had the energy for it, and now this energy is wasted. want to shuffle the deck right now. I'm just going to draw that next turn. On that turn, it helped. The upgrade. It's a good turn. Good work, Strikes. <laughs> Strike time. Amazing. I think we actually take this Thunder Strike. This Thunder Strike slaps. 10 damage to a random enemy for each lightning we channeled this combat. We've got Electro, we've got Ball Lightning. We can make, uh, and if we find a Tempest, we have a Chemical X. So this is going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing if we find a Tempest. Yeah, Tempest Waiting Room, 100%. I think we take this. Even in... Even just after one deck cycle, we can make this uh, 10 times 5. This is a good way to kill a boss. I can't believe we've got both of them, though. The, the Thunder Strike and the Meteor Strike. And if we get Snekawai, this is going to be even better. Although, not as good as Meteor Strike would be. I'm going to go with Thunder Strike over Meteor. 
Ragnarok at home. Oh, we do get the Sneko Eye. Okay, but I still take it, right? Like, definitely. I'm so glad they put Thunderstrike and Slay the Spire too. Star. Black Star with, with no potions? I don't know. I don't know about that. Although, it, also, I guess Sneko Eye with no potions. Kind of equally scary in some ways. Maybe this shop. All the shops are early on. Interesting. Something like this. Might want to avoid multiple elites, but I think we're fine. I'm pretty sure we're fine. Surely we are fine. Chill charge battery electro. That's pretty good block, too. Why all three? I guess Ball Lightning is objectively the best of these cards. It's not actually that bad. We only take five. I am the God of Thunder. Get out of here. We can do better than these. And we don't need cards right now. I think after you take a Sneko Eye, you're more likely to want to skip cards. You want to build a smaller deck that's just the really powerful stuff. As best you can. Okay, this is a little bit of an oof. I just double defend? Hmm. Seems better to do chill defend, or no, 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 cold snap defend. Keep the chill. Or we could play the electro and try to kill with a thunder strike as quickly as possible. But it doesn't feel like we get there in one go, even if I play this. So I'm going to get the frost orb in play. Uh, and then don't play defend. That would be dumb. Foolish. I want to compile for two, but I also want to play the charge battery, I think. No, it's less block than Auric Alchem is. Let's just go zap. No, no, ball lightning, compile. Ooh, cool. Yeah. Uh, and don't evoke the Frost Orb, because again, Orichalcum is here. And that will also stop Orichalcum. There we go. Zero cost. That's what you want to see. Commence the zip zap. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got almost got excited for that potion there. Storm? Only have one power so far. Storm Thunderstrike, though. Yeah, I want it. I want it. I don't know if this is good, but I want it. So let's do it. Definitely want it. Ooh, and I probably want Anchor over anything else here. 
With Sozu, you have no protection from turn one brick draws. And uh, as Parasite showed, it can cost a lot of health. So I'm going to take the anchor here. Hologram also very good. Defragment, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. More than pretty good, actually. But and I, I've got eyes for the anchor here. Uh-oh. So that's what makes me go through the second shop. Interesting. Necronomicon here would be hilarious. And uh, the free power on turn one would be really good. And Nilri's Codex would be really good. So I'm clicking this, and then we're going to go this way. I'll rest here. We'll fight this elite. And then maybe we rest and fight another elite. That sounds pretty good. Let's read. Book. We got it. Necronomicon Thunderstrike. Here we go. Good talk. The run. Chemical X payoff begins now. Uh oh. Oh. Salvation, though. Good times. I do want this dead. Yeah, I do want that dead. I guess we just charge battery dual cast, take a bit of damage here. Completely okay with that. Less okay with this. This is of far too large a number. Parasite man, please don't do that. Please never do that ever again. A hundred and twenty damage, by the way. Glorious. And a hologram plus? Why are they all plus? Let's see, that's... 1 in 8, 1 in 64, 1 in 512? I think it's a 1 in 512 chance to see three upgraded cards randomly in Act 2 on A20. Cool. Very cool. Do we get to live through this fight? Only time will tell. Looks like we can get at least one of them. On turn one here. Probably both of them, actually, with the lightning orbs. Uh, do I want to chill for three? I don't think so, actually. I'm trying to kill him. I can chill for two now, which actually seems prudent. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good start, good start. Definitely play Electro. Maybe wanted to compile first. Actually, don't think I do, because I want to guarantee that I can Thunder Strike next turn for massive damage. Only 10 times 7, because it rolled low cost. Bummer. Also, we're getting attacked. Hmm. What's the line here? Okay, 
We can rest after this. Thank goodness we have Auric Alchem here. I think I want a Thunderstrike, then Cool-Headed. I want a Thunderstrike first. That way we can redraw into the Thunderstrike as one of our outs. Could kill most of the Gremlins? Yeah. And double defend, or maybe something better? Oh, we got the Thunderstrike again. Easy game, easy life. Look at that. Exact lethal. Holy crap. <laughs> Well, actually, we had a strike still, but, you know, I got it. I lined it up, so that was fun. And we get an Eternal Feather, so now I don't have to rest at all. And we get a Cool-Headed Plus, which I will click on. Well, that went well. Got to, Just got to trust in the Sneko Eye. Any Strobs? I do like having more health. I do like having more health on Defect. Yeah, I'm going to take the hit points here. Kind of worried about what we'll have to skip in Act 3, but I'm not going to worry about it yet. Do I dare fight the Burning Elite? Seems crazy. Let's... no, let's not do that. Wait, this can do more damage? <laughs> okay. I don't think it does enough damage yet. Rather double ball lightning, huh? Alright, do that. No storm today. Let's go chill. Hold snap. Electro. Take only one. Next turn, though, I don't know. We're hoping we draw something good. Hopefully we get seven draws. Yep. How about 12 by 6? Twice. <laughs> 12 by 12. No one can count that high. Ooh. Now we're starting to see some good stuff. Big, expensive, rare cards. And I have to say, one of these, to me, seems like it's better than the other. Because we took Storm. Yeah, Storm means one more Lightning Orb every turn. With each power that we play. To further empower the Thunderstrike to ludicrous numbers. I'm taking it. That was a really good floor. We're actually doing really well here in Act 2. Seem to be high rolling this so far. Now, Designer Inspire says, Would you like to upgrade a card, remove a card, or do both? Uh, I think I just want the remove, actually. Well, 35 gold for a random upgrade. No, those upgrades aren't good. Like, Chill, Storm, and Creative AI are all bricks on the upgrade for the most part. Yeah, no to the upgrade, yes to the remove. Gonna lose a strike. Could have punched him. Try this. Here we go. You can strike charge battery or <laughs> play one of the other cards. All right, strike charge battery. Oh, there we go. Hello, hello. Welcome back, I think. I think we're live. Oh, no, wait, no. Something's very wrong. Now it looks normal? Okay. Okay, I think we're back. I think we're back. 
chat missed a turn. So sorry about that. How did strike charge battery work out? The the strike got doubled by Necronomicon. That's how it worked out. Welcome back. Promise I haven't edited anything while you were away. Not not that this is like super official or anything either. But no no cheating. No cheating occurred during the gap in time. Is it time to creative AI? I think it is, yeah. Creative AI and uh, reinforced here. Reveal console history. <laughs> I don't even think I can open the console right now. Is it, why does it say STS2 here? Because we're playing Spire 2, clearly. That's just what this is. Mega Crit realized they couldn't make a better game than Slay the Spire 2, and so, uh, than Slay the Spire 1. And so they just released Slay the Spire 1 again. Because the game was already perfect. Works for Bethesda. That's right. Works for Blizzard, too. times five, you say? It blip lapped. I'll take one more compiled rubber. Those are drawing pretty well. Those are drawn pretty well. They're a little weird with the snack OI, but I like them. And they don't need an upgrade, which is quite nice. With lots of health here. Let's upgrade reinforced, since it benefits from the Chemex. Let's make it an even better block card. Excellence. Let's do Storm over Ball Lightning twice. Don't anticipate this fight being too hard. These costs are not good. I'm okay with it, I guess. We can take some damage. But now we have five lightning channel. We should be good. The powers. I want to shuffle without reinforced. I'm going to go with yes, I do, actually. because then I can hologram it. Zero cost. Let's freaking go. A hundred and twenty damage. Again. GG. It's working. It's actually working. This is amazing. 
deck is so stupid. Another creative AI or multicast with Chemex. Heck, what do I do? I think we take the multicast, right? It's tremendous AoE damage if I use it on a Lightning Orb. It's another version of Reinforced Body if I use it on a Frost Orb. It does need more focus. I agree with that. But the deck does in general anyway. Let's take that multicast. And I don't hate nuclear battery here. Could also go Calling Bell or Philostone, I guess. Nuclear Battery would give us a Plasma Orb in the front slot at the start of each combat. So, in our only orb would be a Plasma Orb. We start with five energy per turn, and we get two more energy immediately when we evoke it, which can give us more upfront energy to use. Definitely falls off after the first couple of turns, though. Can also work with Multicast to be an effective double energy. It's actually maybe not that good. I do like it, though. Good with Compile Driver, too? You're right. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do that nuclear battery. And we have to go for the Burning Elite, unfortunately, so our options are pretty restricted here. Aside from there, if we want to shop or not. Um, do we take more events or more combats? We get more events right now. I want rare relics. Please and thank you. We should uh, absolutely stomp double orb walkers. No reason not to do this immediately. All right. Multicast, pretty good so far. Do we want a double energy or an aggregate? Or go for the eyes. I like the double energy, especially with our high base energy. Let's do it. Times two. And then we lose. Lose chill. Or one of the compiles. Got two cool headeds. We can lose chill. It's not free anymore. Like the compiles at the moment. Although a three cost double energy card is pretty bad. Admittedly. Beautiful. Go for the Ice Plus is back. I actually do like it. It's quite a nice way to help mitigate damage from Time Eater and the Heart. Although the Heart does gain Artifact partway through. Not going to spend 180 gold on a Relic here, sorry. Not when there's a shop right behind you. Containing... Uh, containing... A card remove. Cauldron, yeah. Yeah, Cauldron. Of course, Cauldron. Is every run Inspire winnable? Basically, every run Inspire is winnable through some sequence of player actions. However, determining which sequence of actions is required may be a unreasonably difficult task for some runs. One, but uh, a couple of seeds, I believe, actually, have been discovered that are 
actually unwinnable on Ascension 20 for one specific character. And other impossible seeds have been theorized to exist. They just haven't actually been located. But the vast majority of runs that you encounter, like every single run that you play when you start this game, is going to be a run that has some sort of winning sequence of actions. Although, again, whether you're able to find those is a different question. Oh, let's play the crit of AI. Yes. Excellent. Maximum thunder striking. Although it wasn't maximum enough. Hmm. So I'll just block as best I can. Not too bad. Beautiful. Thank you, Creative AI, for your input. Ripple uh, Thunderstrike. Beautiful. Get an ancient tea set for even more turn one energy. And I don't think I want these. Up to what ascension level would I say that I'm able to win 100% of the time? I think I could claim 99% win rate on probably up to ascension 9. Once you add the Ascender's Bane on ascension 10, start each run cursed. I think that's when you lose the sufficient consistency. Um, I don't know that I would say I could do 99.99 or true 100%. But if we're just talking single-digit precision, then yeah, I could do probably a 100 streak on something up to Ascension 9. Although maybe not if we're talking heart. Heart makes it extra hard. Quartz is very challenging. Double strike. Spooky. Uh, let's start with drawing cards. Okay, we can hologram reinforce. That's pretty good. Oh, and I can just kill one of them. Okay, that helps a lot. So yes, we're good here. We good. This is 34. So yeah, we can just hit one more time. Cool. It's here! Tempest! I almost clicked on the hologram, but then I saw it. Welcome, Tempest. My child. My savior. Or is with us today. What stone? I knew we were going to get uh, away with taking those early relics. Ha. Perfect.
Cast that. Let's play creative AI and strike, though. Still good, though. It's a very good turn one. And an even better turn two. And a very stupid turn three. charge battery. We've had first echo form, yes, but what about second echo form? What about third storm? Start with a Dark Orb. Hmm. Actually, not sure if I want that. Bullseye's not bad. Actually, I do want Bullseye. Dark Orb means we evoke the plasma faster. I guess that's not really a problem. The pile Driver likes it. The Bullseye likes it. Let's do it. I don't like skipping relics that much anyway. Definitely don't want any of this. Lose five max. Ouch. Free mail ticket. Okay. Means we can upgrade in Act 4. Assuming we want to. I think another fight here if I wanted. I think we're good. Yeah, let's upgrade Tempest and then maybe multicast. <laughs> You're my power. Wait, who, who's this going to kill? You, then you, then you. Okay. Wait, how many do we get? I think just two of them, actually. Oh, no, you got them both. Okay, sweet. Easy game. WD Johnson, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. <laughs> Not play Thunderstrike on the Spiker. I repeat, do not play Thunderstrike on the Spiker. You will not like what happens. Loop. Sure. It's a good upgrade, I guess. Sure. Stinky turn one. Yeah. Guess we just take the hit. Nothing to do about it. Got 87 health to get through both boss fights. And we just got Echo Form from Creative AI. We good. We good. That's basically a full block. I don't want to evoke that yet. Well, that is a full block. I can't count. So is this. I'm just going to kill you both very quickly now.
Oof. That draw, though. Ouch. Flippers will be good here. Twelve damage to a random enemy. Seventeen times. Three times. Bye. That's a lot of damage. And now for the snail. I'm going to do creative AI storm. I don't want to evoke the plasma this turn. Rather than storm creative AI here. This order is on purpose, just to be clear. Try to multicast the frost? Yeah, we get 30 block doing this. That's pretty good. I guess I want to compile to find out if Reinforce is on top. Yeah, okay, good. So we can do Go for the Eyes. Which happens twice. Tempest. Reinforce at the end. I got bad news for you, slug man. Got really bad news for you. The power. The powers. GG. All right, we're on to Act 4 with this hot nonsense of a Sneko-Eye Thunderstrike defect deck. What a wild run this has been. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? You charge your Thunderstrike to its maximum, dealing 1966. Now there's a good year. Have I been here before? Upgrade multi? I think so. I think so. One more time on the evoke. Where have these cards been all run? Can't buy a potion. I will buy a hologram. Strange spoon could let us keep what? Double energy and tempest? That's not much. No, I don't think that's very good. That would mean it would have a 1 in 4 chance to do actually nothing in the heart fight. 
The strike dummy show uh, added damage? It does not, unfortunately. I wish it did. Just gonna remove another strike here. And I could exactly buy loop. Curious. I don't have enough focus to want to do that, though. I don't think I'm gonna buy that. Let's go. Infinite draw, yeah, I think this is a weird turn. I think what I want to do is creative AI, ball lightning to get three orb types, and then compiled rubber gets doubled if we draw a six. I'll have two energy left if I use that on multicast. I'll multicast uh, five times. We'll go back to ten energy. It's plenty of energy. Cool. We have Thunderstrike in hand as well. I think I can do something very stupid here. Yeah, let him cook. So you're telling me I can do this. I can hollow multicast. Why on earth would I want to hollow multicast? You see this? Thunderstrike. Actually, wait. Maybe I would want to do it multicast. This is more fun, though. Thunderstrike again. And a third time. But yeah, multicast actually may be better. Genuinely. We got one anyway. I like it. Who doesn't want to triple hardcast... Uh, oh, jeez. Triple hardcast your Thunderstrike for... Bajillion block. Oh. Definitely should have, uh, should have multicast it, maybe. That's a kill. It's not, is it? It's not. Ow. That's bad. Not that bad, but pretty bad. That's good. Pretty good. And do I want a skill on turn one? I guess Tempest is good on turn one. Let's go with Tempest on turn one. God, I wish this was two cost. I could do so much damage on turn one if this was two cost. Dang it. Oh, well, I can still play Creative AI after the Double Energy Tempest. But yeah, if this was two cost, we'd, we would cap damage on the Heartless turn. So we're already doing quite well. That said, I'm going to need a buffer to not get murdered by the Heart here. In a moment. Or Reinforced Body, that would work too. You know, game. Game. Uh, let's skip the capacitor. Ow. <laughs> He's... Wait. But I can't play it, though, yeah? No, I can't play it! <laughs> the defend is not enough with Beat of Death at 2. We have to draw cards. We have to draw cards. So I guess it's got to be cool-headed first then, and then I can compile driver after that. Yeah, maybe I can. Maybe we can. Compile draws one. 
Is one good enough? I don't think so. Got plenty of hit points. I think that's good. I think that gets us through the turn. Let me double check here. We play Meteor Strike. We go to five block. I'm down to three. Defend. Go to six block. Then down to four. Multicast. Buffer. Yes. Yes. That works. The energy? Wait. Yeah. Meteor Strike. Defend. Multicast. Buffer. Yeah. Or dual casts. Uh, Multicast, it doesn't matter, right? This is why you want potions, no kidding. It's okay, creative AI provides. Do not play any more cards. Okay. Oh, now you show your face. Where were you when I needed you, reinforced body? Discord pile is garbage. <laughs> We're in such trouble here. We're in such trouble here. This deck is not that good at the moment. Hollow Meteor or Hollow Thunder Strike here. If we Hollow Thunder Strike, that's the way to damage cap this turn. Uh, but I don't want to take Beat of Death damage. I think I have much of a choice, huh? Although that would get played twice. No, I can't I can't do that. Hmm. So we hollow a block card? None of them are good enough. I don't know what to do here. It seems bad. Reinforce, then multicast. That's kind of a fun idea. That's a fun idea, actually. I like that line. It's the best way to not take any damage. And we get to play a bunch of stuff. Except. And calipers would be good here. Good. So we do loop. Then we hologram. I can't thunder strike, huh? I guess we meteor strike again then. Should bullseye first. Still ball lightning bullseye. Okay. Not in love with that turn. Buffer, you're here on the wrong turn. Gonna die. Spooky. Any way out of this now? Doesn't feel like it. I might have to play buffer to evoke to protect myself from beat of death. <laughs> I guess that is a line. All right, let's see what Cool Headed draws first. Okay, we got defend. We're we're good. Well, I wouldn't call it good. No, we're not good at all. In fact, we're dying. Is what's happening.
Meteor Strike, go! Oh, we're, we're, we're dying. We can do 12 by 20, though. We can do a lot of damage. It's good, good for us. Good for us. Alright, GG. What a fun run. Even though we lost, that was a, a really good one. Necronomicon Thunderstrike with Strike Dummy. Too good, too good. Yeah, if only we had taken the first reinforced body we saw. Wait, what did we take? Um, what did I take instead? Oh, Ball Lightning. We did need that Ball Lightning. Heck. But yeah, if only I'd taken the, uh, the first reinforced body, I think this run would have been able to get all the way. That was a very fun run. A very, very fun run. GG. Yeah, that's a that's your sneak peek at Slay the Spire 2. Seems to me harder than the first game. But uh it's very fun. Very fun. Well, Twitch chat. Unfortunately, I've got to get going early here today. Um that third run took up all the time I had allotted for a second game, so we'll do some more Slice and Dice later in the week. But for now, I have to actually close down our stream and say so long and farewell, everybody. See you later, Just Blake, Oreo, Nikki No Toes, Mark McCarr, It's Chili Chili, It's Tito, Some Amir, and everybody else. Thank you for hanging out during the amazing Spire runs today. Hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, whether it be morning, evening, or neither of those things. And we'll be back tomorrow, not later than noon Eastern Standard Time, with some more Spire Slay in action. Catch you on the flip side, folks. Toodaloo!